Our study this week uh, comes from Proverbs chapter 3, uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, the, the title of the, of the lesson is uh, Life's Decision, uh, or Life's Direction, uh, the, uh, our decision about our direction is a very important aspect of our uh, of our lives. Uh, it's been amazing that uh, in the past 500 years, the concept of destination, direction, travel, intelligence, knowledge has uh, has simply exploded. Uh, apparently, for many many centuries. Uh, the human race simply moved from one place to another very gradually. Occasionally, there was a fairly large group of people who moved from one place to another. But uh, uh, the, uh, the normal expansion was a fairly slow process. But after 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, uh, things began to change rather radically. Uh, it's interesting that in Daniel chapter 12, he says that uh, he is told by the angel to seal up his book. He said, it's not for you, it's for the people at the time of the end, when men would rush to and fro upon the earth, uh, and knowledge would be greatly increased. Well, since uh, about 500 years ago, that has been the uh, that has been the movement of of our world. We're all going somewhere. We're constantly going somewhere, uh, both literally and figuratively. Uh, we we're moving around. I did a rough calculation of some some of my air travels, and uh, I have traveled enough air miles. Uh, just roughly speaking, without without really getting serious about every trip, but I I know of uh, quickly I know of enough trips I have made in the air to have circled the Earth ten times at least. So uh, in in uh, in my few years, I have traveled enough in by airplanes to have circled the Earth ten times. Uh, the first ship that is credited uh, with going around the world was uh, the ships of uh, Ferdinand Magellan. And Ferdinand Magellan in 1552 set out from uh, Spain with 270 men and five ships. Only one ship returned. Returned to Spain after 30 months with only 22 men aboard. Uh, Magellan himself had been murdered in the, in, uh, on an island of uh, the group of islands that are now composed a nation of the Philippines uh, by a poisoned arrow uh, because of a skirmish they got into on an island with, with natives there. Uh, obviously, they, uh, <laughs> they needed a better GPS. Uh, we all use a GPS meter these days. Uh, or most people do who are traveling. There's still a few holdouts that uh, stick with the map only, but uh, most of us are involved in uh, in GPS. But uh, thinking about about our our travel, our directions, and our decisions to move from one place to another, uh, uh, as I say, Sebastian Elcano got back to Spain uh, after 30 months. Of travels, they were trying to find a route to, uh, to to the spices of the of the Orient. They were not just setting out to go around the world, but that it so happened that they did make it around the world. But it took thirty months, and all the men died except those twenty-two. And Sebastian uh, Elcano finally brought the ship in after Ferdinand uh, had been had uh, had died. Uh, the first around-the-world airplane trip was in 1924, uh, and it took it took that particular. There were there were four planes that that uh, left Seattle 
heading around the world. It took them five months to make that trip. Uh, there were four planes originally, four uh, single-engine planes, with eight men in open cockpits. Uh, they were heading out around the world. Two of the, two of the planes actually made the trip. It took them five months to make the trip around the world. Uh, they had to do 74 stops uh, for fuel and for other uh, necessities. They left Edwards Air Force Base uh, and, uh, and, and uh, or, or excuse me, they left from Seattle. They left from Seattle and uh, headed, headed uh, west rather than east. But uh, later... A, uh, in 1984, uh, that was uh, quite a few years later, uh, we have a brother and a sister, uh, the, uh, the Rutan brother and sister team. Uh, another brother of the family had designed an airplane. It was called the Voyager. And, uh, and the brother and sister flew the Voyager around the world without a stop. Uh, they put enough fuel in the plane to make it around the world without a stop. Their average speed at 11,000 feet was 120 miles an hour. It took them nine days to go 27,000 miles. Uh, so uh, it, it's just amazing what has happened in, in our time. Uh, speaking of uh, of knowledge, because we were talking about men and women <laughs> going to and fro upon the earth uh, about our our directions in life, uh, and uh, speaking of knowledge, uh, where in the world are we going in that direction? Because in the year two thousand, it was estimated that knowledge doubles every two years. Now get that get that number. In the year 2000, that's just 20 years ago, uh, it was estimated that knowledge would double every two years. In 2018, uh, it, is, as it was estimated in 2018 that knowledge doubles every 12 hours. So now, knowledge is doubling at least every 12 hours. So, uh, in times like these, we definitely uh, need an established and a few and a sure direction. I found I found a statement that I I loved. I, I have no idea where I found it, but I had written it down and ran across it. It says, "He who is slave to the compass is master of the ocean. All others must sail close to land." Here it again. He who is slave to the compass is master of the ocean. All others must sail close to land. Now we have a compass. We have a great compass. It's called the Holy Scriptures. Uh, we have more than a compass. We have, uh, we have a good GPS because those GPS uh, systems will talk to us and they will tell us uh, when to turn and when not to turn. <laughs> Uh, they will say, stay left, you know, or uh, bear right. They, they're very careful to, to instruct us on the way we should go. And our scriptures do the same thing. Uh, our, our Bible will, uh, will give us pretty direct instructions. Our, uh, our lesson, as I mentioned, comes from Proverbs chapter 3, uh, speaking about uh, directions and uh, increase of knowledge and, and uh, rushing to and fro in life. Let's look, at, uh, let's look at some verses there from chapter 3. First, the first four verses of chapter 3 says, My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands, for they will bring you many days a full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. So uh, that, that beginning there of, uh, of those words in chapter, in chapter 3 are of interest to us because... Uh, 
uh, it's sort of like an instruction manual. Well, actually, actually, chapter two, which we didn't, uh, which we didn't look at, uh, chapter two is more like a an instruction manual because it expresses the tremendous value of wisdom, uh, which leads to understanding, particularly the understanding of God's direction and God's blessing. Uh, we need to realize that as we study Proverbs, Proverbs are not commands. Proverbs are expressions of truisms. Uh, that is to say that there are certain things that are generally true that most people recognize as true. Uh, there will be exceptions to Proverbs. Uh, but a truism uh, is, a good, uh, is a good roadmap in the sense that uh, what is generally accepted as true is always worthwhile, and we need to realize that then that that, that proverbs are not promises. <laughs> they're not God's promises. They're not God's commands. They're simply statements of uh, of truth that uh, that will be of great help to us. So, uh, how do we choose our direction in life? We heard uh, what uh, the writer says there as he begins chapter three that uh, we should certainly. Uh, not uh, not forget the teachings because that will give us that will give us a real direction. Talking about faithfulness, uh, he says, tie them to you around your neck. He says, put them on your heart. Let's look at that for a little bit. Uh, he starts off with, uh, uh, don't forget the teachings. We uh, we always we always need uh, we always need something to uh, as a base, something to. Uh, to tie our knowledge to. And of course, the writer of Proverbs here uh, was saying that, that we're going to start off with the teachings that you've heard with the wisdom of God that has been shared with you. Uh, don't forget the teachings. Uh, many years ago, I was in a little town in uh, northern Peru, the little town of Pantoja, and uh, I needed to get back to Ecuador, which was uh, several miles upstream and uh, finally got, uh, got a ride on a big dugout canoe that belonged to the Ecuadorian Navy. Uh, we left mid-afternoon, and about, uh, about sundown, we stopped. We were on the Napa River, uh, and as we were going along, I wondered why we stopped. And so uh, I asked one of the fellows, uh, because we stopped, we had a we found a little uh, little spot on the river that someone had uh, had uh, some uh, some drinks there. They weren't cold, but they were drinks. Uh, we got we got some cokes and uh, orange crush, that kind of thing that he had there in his little his little store on the side of the on the side of the Napa River. And so we were uh, we were sitting there and I asked one guy, said, "Well, why why are we waiting here?" Because I knew we had to get back to Shelmera. Uh, and uh, and it was going to be an all night trip up the up the up the river. So uh, as uh, as we were as we were sitting there on the banks of the Napo River, uh, a guy explained to me. He said, "Well, we've got to wait until the moon comes up because uh, we'll have we'll have to be guided by the moon. We have a full moon tonight, so uh, we will be able to sail." Well. Uh, or not sail, but travel. We because we had we had that canoe loaded with gasoline on an outboard engine, and uh, when the moon came up, <laughs> we started and uh, up the river we go. But it was still pretty dark, uh, even with bright moonlight, and uh, and lots and lots of shear pins were carried along because we hit limbs, we hit sandbars, we hit rocks uh, in that canoe going up the river. And it, uh, finally, about dawn. We arrived in, uh, in Shelmira. Uh, that had been our destination. But the guys, the guys who were taking that canoe up the river uh, had to have some, some way of guiding. Uh, they were watching the moon. <laughs> uh, they also had some other tools with them. They had plenty of gasoline. They had lots and lots of shear pins because, uh, and a couple extra propellers because we... Uh, we got in lots of trouble along the way, but they had whatever we needed in order to keep us uh, to keep us going. And uh, here we find that the uh, that the proverb uh, the proverbist said that uh, the heart must keep God's commands. 
Interesting here, the word heart. Uh, it is a word spelled in English, L-E-B, leb. Uh, and uh, it means it has been spoken, as if to say the final conclusion. So uh, many times in, uh, in the Old Testament, when we talk about the seat of emotions, it's our entrañas, or inside the stomach, where emotions are born. But the heart is a different thing. The heart is an act of the will. Uh, the heart is the mind. Uh, the heart is our understanding. Uh, the heart may or may not have uh, our emotions tied to it always, but uh, it is the driving force of life for good living. That's the concept in the Old Testament that when you see the word heart, uh, it's talking about everything you are. Now, we, uh, we, we have... Uh, <laughs> We have a great GPS meter uh, in, uh, in, the, in, in the form of a heart in this sense that uh, everything we are gets involved in our direction of life. Uh, everything we are gets involved in our wisdom and our knowledge. Uh, so uh, we, we, have to, we, have to, we have to trust and not doubt uh, that's uh, that's one of the things that uh, that uh, that he's going to tell us here. Let's see. Uh, we have the the following verses. Uh, there are three through, or excuse me, five through eight, are are going to tell us uh, something about that. He says, "Trust in the Lord." Uh, with what? With all your heart. We have the heart again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, wherever you go, wherever you plan to go, uh, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Uh, the guys on that canoe that night had to watch that moon. That was, the, that, that, was, that was the best guide we had going up that wide river through the jungle. Uh, keep your eyes uh, on, on, the, uh, on whatever is guiding you. Keep your, keep your heart on whatever is guiding you. If all your, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. So he starts off saying, said, don't doubt. You know, uh, <laughs> When, when we're driving sometimes in, in new territory, we have to trust the GPS. And uh, with, with our scriptures, we can trust what it says to us. Trust in God with all you are. When he says heart again here, uh, in, the, in the Bible, we do not have the division of personality, uh, mind, heart, soul, spirit. Uh, God looks at us as, as one. God looks at us as a person. Uh, God looks at us as an integral being. It's what we are. And God deals with everything we are, not with just part of us. So he says, don't doubt. Uh, uh, there's, just put your whole heart into it. But he says, don't take your own inclinations too seriously. We, uh, we sometimes think that our ideas are really superior. But uh, he says, in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will make your path straight. So don't take your own inclinations too seriously. Uh, the Lord's word itself must become our GPS. See, he knows. He knows, he knows the whole route. Uh, it's interesting. You know, if you're riding down the road and you decide to take, take a shortcut sometimes, or maybe you want to stop at a service station, uh, so you pull up a little further than the crossroads, and all of a sudden, your GPS meter or your GPS voice <laughs> reactor begins to say, at the first opportunity, make a U-turn and return. Make a U-turn. And sometimes uh, that voice gets obnoxious if you're going to uh, go into a shopping center or, uh, or take a, a small detour in an opposite direction for some reason. Uh, and uh, I think the Bible does the same thing. If we will let it speak to us, if we get off track, if we get out of our out of our proper direction of life, 
it will be saying, uh, make a U-turn. It's interesting. The, the term make a U-turn is the way you would translate the word repentance. In, in our Bibles, we see the word repentance all the time. And sometimes we think that means uh, crying over sins. Well, that could be remorse. We may, we may weep over our sins. We may wish we had never committed them. We may wish uh, we had never been caught. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons we have remorse. But the repentance uh, does not mean crying tears. Repentance means turn around. Absolutely turn around. Change your mind. Change your direction. So uh, the, Lord, the Lord's word is our GPS. It tells us turn around. Repent now and again. It tells us you're on the wrong path. So he says uh, here that we shouldn't doubt, but let the Lord guide us. Because uh, the scriptures knows exactly what God expects. And uh, if we're reading them, we pretty much do also. We know what he wants. We, uh, we, are, to avoid, we are to avoid evil. He says, be very careful to avoid evil. Uh, and living close to godly wisdom and, uh, and the knowledge of the Lord, he says, uh, it is a healthy activity. Look, look what he says there. This will bring healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, know him, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Then he turns to a little different thing here. He, he, he suggests here, uh, before we get into the actual pro listing of Proverbs, because they're going to begin after chapter 3, uh, he's still giving advice here. And uh, so in... Uh, in, in verses 9 and 10, uh, he's going to say, uh, we should be generous. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this is a concept here that, uh, that we should be generous in our attitudes because remember Jesus said uh, on one occasion that to do it uh, unto another is to do it to him. And so uh, also we hear the prophet say what God wants is mercy and not sacrifice. So uh, what we do here, we, we, uh, we participate in, uh, in worship by a sacrifice of thanksgiving and generosity. Uh, and we may be assured that this is genuine worship. Uh, God, uh, God looks upon the whole person, remember, not just an offering envelope. God looks upon the whole person, and the, and the, uh, the concept here is uh, generosity, and be sure that uh, you take, you take uh, God into consideration in the beginning. He said, uh, with, your, with your possessions and with the first produce, uh, so, uh, and remembering that Jesus said, inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these, you have done it unto me. So, so we're involved in a very real sense uh, as, as representative of, of those who walk in the paths of righteousness. Uh, so we may, be, we may be assured of God's concern. He says, the, the promise, not necessarily a promise here, but the proverb concept is... Uh, is that if, if you're kind and generous and you fulfill your obligations to God, then, then you, may, you may rest assured that things will go well for you. Uh, Jesus on one occasion talked about the fact that uh, he has great concern for us. Uh, and he, uh, he talked about the kingdom. He said one time that, that the Gentiles are constantly seeking after food and clothing and, and housing, they're, they're seeking after those necessities of life as if they were primary. 
as if they were the primary consideration of our existence. He said, don't let that be your primary motive for living. He said, your primary motive for living is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things that you need will be added to you. He says, he says don't you understand, says, not even a sparrow will fall to the ground without your father taking note of it. He said, and then he added, he went a little further. He said, the very hairs of your head are numbered. God is concerned uh, with our whole self. God is concerned with everything we are. And so uh, we see that we are to seek first the kingdom of God uh, and, and realize that, uh, that, uh, that this is a part of our total worship experience. Now, the last section in, uh, in our paragraph for today is uh, verses 11 and 12, the last two verses uh, in, in our study. It says, Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he takes delight. Do not despise the Lord's instructions, uh, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as the father disciplines the son in whom he takes delight. Uh, we, accept, we should accept God's word as if it were for me alone. You know, going back to the GPS concept, when you turn on that GPS and you get a you get a you get a map, you get a destination set. That thing is going to talk to you only. There may be a thousand other people that are traveling, uh, but that GPS in in your vehicle or the one on your phone is going to be talking to you, and it's going to be talking about your destiny, your destination, your knowledge of the highway. So uh, our Bible is the same thing. Uh, it speaks to us, and it speaks directly to us. It, uh, it's interesting the, that uh, there at the end of, uh, of John's Gospel, when, uh, when Peter and, uh, and John and some of the other disciples were walking with Jesus, and uh, Jesus was talking to Peter about what he expected of him. He says, Peter, this is what I'm going to expect from you. It's interesting, rather than Peter saying, yes, Lord, I'll be delighted to, to follow your plans for my life, he turned and looked, and there was John coming behind. And, and rather than say, Lord, I'll be, I'll be glad to follow your plans for my life, he says, what about John? What's he got to do? And Jesus re, sort of rebuked Peter. He says, uh, what is that to you? If, if my plan is for him to stay here until I return, that's not your business. And as, we, and as we listen to our GPS in the car or on the phone as we're traveling, it doesn't make a difference what it's saying to somebody else. But if we intend to reach our destination, we better pay attention to what, what, that, voice from, what that voice from cyberspace says to us. Uh, your GPS is talking to you. Your Bible is going to speak to you. As you read it, as you study it, as you seek to understand it, it is going to speak to you. Uh, let it speak to you. God's instructions usually are pretty clear. Uh, the Bible is not too terribly hard to understand when it comes to orders about what we are to do or not to do. Now, that, that, uh, that order is not always, not always comfortable. He said the, the Lord's discipline may not always be comfortable. But the fact is that usually the discipline of the Lord uh, comes in the form of consequences uh, of our bad decisions. Uh, it's amazing that uh, uh, the, 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 uh, we make a bad decision and the consequence is not good. And uh, it looks like we're being punished for some reason or another. And then we hear the Lord saying, I'll be beside you. You know, I, I have forgiven you for that. 
it's forgiven, but you pay the consequences uh, in the sense that you, that you have set up certain parameters that, that, uh, that will not be changed. So the discipline is because of our experience that has gone awry, then uh, we are going to suffer some discipline. We're going to have to learn by experience. We say that all the time, you know, that uh, we need to learn by experience. Uh, there are other ways of learning, but uh, that is a sure way of learning. And uh, sometimes the discipline of the Lord will simply be uh, going through the experience as a result of a decision we have made. But, but, it says, his discipline is always that of a father who takes delight in his child. Whatever we're going through, regardless of why we're going through it, whatever we're going through, uh, God is with us in the presence of the Spirit. Uh, he gives us comfort. Jesus said, I will give you the peace that passes understanding, uh, regardless of why or what we are going through. Uh, we can be assured that, uh, that God is with us as a loving father is with a child in whom he delights. Uh, the, if we come to a conclusion of our study today, I think we would, uh, I would proclaim anyway, that we have our GPS. We have our uh, global positioning uh, or, uh, uh, implement. Uh, our, our our GPS will is the Bible, and it will certainly tell us where we are. It will certainly tell us where we ought to be, and it will tell us how we can get there as God's people. Uh, by the way, you can even get this GPS uh, very cheaply. Bibles are not really expensive. You can even get a free one. There are people who give Bibles away all the time. Uh, and, and it's amazing. I have a, I have a uh, 2011 GPS uh, embedded in the electronic system of, uh, of our car. Now, that 2011 GPS uh, knows everything that was going on before 2011, so far as the highway system is concerned. Now, everything that happened after 2011 uh, that GPS in that car does not know about. It has no idea about all those new developments that have, that have happened. It has no idea about the bypasses that have been built since 2011. It has no idea about new highways that may, be, may have been open since 2011. But uh, our GPS called the Bible never has to be updated. It does not have to be updated regardless of what is going on, the Lord God understands. And his word, his word will touch us wherever we are. His word knows. Uh, the God who inspired that scripture inspired it in such a way that it will speak to us without having to be updated. And as you study uh, your scriptures, uh, may you come to not only uh, have knowledge, but may you have wisdom uh, and uh, a profound understanding of your destiny, of your destination. And may you see clearly from the scriptures how to get there and how to walk. May the Lord bless you as you read and as you study uh, the scriptures. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you have revealed to us in your word. Help us to have the, not only knowledge, but the wisdom to understand in such a way that may, we may walk in paths of righteousness for your namesake. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have a good day.